today uh, the fifth day of myself presenting the lesson equilibrium chemical and ionic uh, equilibrium okay today is 6th of october now yesterday's in the yesterday's class i was talking about uh, relative strength of acids and uh, i also told you that uh, dissociation constant ka the value of ka for a particular acid can be regarded as a quantitative measure of strength so if an acid has a higher value of ka it is a stronger acid that is what i was talking about in the previous class yesterday now today i will just like to show you a derivation a derivation about the calculation 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 of concentration of hydronium ion h3o plus and degree degree of dissociation degree of dissociation this derivation may not be necessary it is not required in the for the examination purpose but the derivation steps are important for solving problems based on this topic so the concentration this symbol which you see over here the concentration of hydronium ions now higher the concentration of hydronium ions stronger is the acid that is already known to all of us now here let us assume something let us say that there is an acid a weak acid let us take this a weak acid a weak acid in aqueous solution okay in aqueous solution that is it is present in water it dissociates partially to give hydronium ions to give hydronium ions and the conjugate base a minus in aqua solution okay so this is the ionic equation now if you assume if we assume say small c if you assume small c to be the initial concentration initial concentration of the acid weak acid so this is the initial concentration initial concentration of the acid c then initially the concentration of hydronium ion is zero the concentration of a minus the conjugate base is also zero okay now when equilibrium has reached so at equilibrium at equilibrium at equilibrium concentration concentration so at equilibrium the concentration of all this can be worked out suppose if we if we let alpha if we let alpha to be the degree of dissociation of the acid okay then then the concentration of hydronium ion should be c into alpha the concentration of a minus should be c into alpha this small c into alpha remember that whereas the concentration of h the weak acid will be c into 1 minus alpha so this is the tricks which you have to remember okay in this uh, what do you call derivation now now we know at equilibrium at equilibrium at equilibrium the concentration of the acid weak acid is equal to c into 1 minus alpha and concentration of hydronium ion h3o plus is equal to c alpha oh, yeah. and the concentration of the conjugate base is equal to again c alpha okay now if you apply apply if we apply if you apply the law of mass action law of mass action and the law of chemical equilibrium chemical equilibrium equilibrium to the above equation any equation then we can write a sentence over here uh, an expression 
dissociation constant of the acid will be equal to concentration of hydronium ions multiplied by concentration of the conjugate base divided by concentration of the weak acid that is HA. Okay, now substituting the values of the concentration for hydronium ions it is C alpha. Okay, for conjugate base it is again C alpha divided by uh, concentration of the acid will be C into 1 minus alpha. Now, if we simplify this, we will get, if we simplify this, we will get over here C alpha square because this C and this C will cancel, one C will cancel. So, we will get C alpha square divided by 1 minus alpha. But note that it is a weak acid. So, for a weak acid, for a weak acid, for a weak acid, like acetic acid or formic acid, this 1 minus alpha is taken to be equal to 1 because alpha, the degree of dissociation is very, very small. So, the dissociation constant can be written as C alpha square or I can write alpha is equal to root under Ka by C. So, this is what you have to remember for use in calculations. Further, knowing Knowing the value of degree of dissociation, hydronium ion concentration can be obtained. Now, we know the symbol for hydronium ion concentration is S3O plus within square brackets. So, concentration of this hydronium ion, we know from the equation, it is C alpha. Now, let us put the values of uh, alpha over here. So, we get C and alpha value is over here, root under Ka by C. So, root under Ka, this is concentration of the acid divided by concentration. So, if I put the C inside, then I will get root under root under K A C. So this is the other formula which you have to remember, which you have to remember for use in calculation. So to get the concentration of the hydronium ion, we have to apply this formula. Okay. Now, now, now here over here it is to be noted that this expression is valid only for the acids of one type. That means which produce only one hydronium ion. For example, if you have acids which produce more than one hydronium ion, or let's take one example, say we have hydrogen sulfide. So hydrogen sulfide uh, dissociates in water, in aqueous solution to give uh, hydronium ion in two steps. In the first step, one hydronium ion and bisulfide ion. Here in this situation, in the first step, the dissociation constant of the acid Ka1 it is the value is around 1.0 and 10 power of minus 7. And for the second step, for the dissociation of the ion, the hydride, or what you call uh, hydrogen sulfide ion in water, it breaks down to give another hydronium ion and a sulfide ion. Here, for the second equation, the dissociation constant of the acid it is roughly 1.3 into 10 to the power of minus 30. Now you see. There are two values over here. So, here in order to calculate the hydronium ion concentration, remember that the for such acids, all the stages of ionization need to be considered. Okay. Then only your answer will be correct. Otherwise, the answer might not be correct also. Okay. Now, now moving to the next uh, topic over here, determination of relative strength of weak acids. Now, for this, I will just uh, open your books to page number, just a second, uh, page number over here, uh, it is on page number, mm. just a second, my page is loading, okay. Just a second voice, it is taking some time to load, okay.
So it's on page number 459. Just check. Determination of relative strength of weak acids in your textbook, the new textbook, page 458-59. After calculation of hydronium ion concentration and degree of dissociation. Okay. It is on page number 400 and uh, 400 and let me check 457. Sorry, page 457, page 457, 58, 458. Correct. Yes. Now I'll share my screen with you all. Okay. Okay. Now. Look at page number 458 of a new textbook. Okay. Here I just calculated this and showed you this formula over here. If you look at this formula, uh, just a second. Uh, concentration of hydronium ion, this is what I had worked out, is equal to root under KAC. This K stands for the dissolution constant of the acid. Okay. So here remember that uh, if there is a Acid which is producing two hydronium and it is called diprotic, otherwise three means triprotic. Okay, so all the stages are important over here in order to calculate the degree of dissociation or concentration of the hydronium ion. Okay, now the next part is determination of relative strength of weak acids. Following two methods are used to determine the relative strength of weak acids. The first one is called dissociation constant method. Suppose if you have to determine the relative strength of two weak acids, HA1 and HA2, let KA1 and KA2 be their respective dissociation constants. And let alpha1 and alpha B, alpha2 be their degrees of dissociation in the concentration of uh, solution C. So the concentration of hydronium and in their solution can be calculated with the help of this equation over here. So concentration of hydronium ion in HA1 is root under KA1C. And concentration of hydronium ion in the second acid HA2 is root under Ka2C. So we can compare their strength. The relative strength of the acid is given by strength of acid 1 divided by strength of acid 2. Put the formula, put the values over here, and you can work out the answer. Okay, so the ratio gives you the relative strength of the two acids over here. Okay, now based on this, we can further we can further uh, also determine by another method which is called competitive protolysis method okay now this one this one is not so important but uh, i will discuss the relative strength of bases in a similar manner over here the strength of a base depends upon its tendency to gain protons that is already known to you therefore the strength of a base can also be quantitatively measured by its dissociation constant or ionization constant kb so since it is a base, we always write Kb. For example, let us consider the following reaction. A base dissolved in water. It is giving a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. Now according to the law of mass action and the law of equilibrium, we get an expression like this. Kb is equal to concentration of BH plus into concentration of OH minus divided by concentration of the base. Now here Kb is large. When the value of Kb is large, the formation of hydroxyl ion is favored. This implies that B has a greater tendency to gain protons and therefore it is a strong base. So when a base is strong, when it has a higher tendency to gain hydrogen ions or protons. On the other hand, a smaller value of Kb indicates that B has a lesser tendency to gain a proton. That is, it is a weak base. Thus, higher the value of Kb, greater is the strength of the base. So based on this, there is a simple problem over here, very, very simple problem. Example 7.13 in your textbooks, okay, on page 459 over there, I think. The dissociation constant of an acetic acid is given 1.8 in the number of minus 5 by 298 Kelvin. So they are telling us to calculate the degree of dissociation of hydronium ions concentration in its 0 0.1 molar solution. So over here, this Ka, Ka is 1.8 in 10 power minus 5. So write down this data. Concentration is 0 0.1 m. Suppose the degree of dissociation under the given condition is alpha. So write down the equation. Acetic acid in water, it is producing hydronium ion and acetate ion. And then initial concentration, we know it is 0, 0 for hydronium and acetate. And for acetic acid, it is given 0 0.1. So we put it over there. 
at equilibrium this becomes c into alpha so 0 0.1 into alpha 0 0.1 into alpha and this one becomes 0 0.1 multiplied by 1 minus alpha so knowing the concentrations and applying the formula earlier which are given so put the value of k okay and substitute the con uh, concentration of hydronium ion acetate and, and acetic acid and work out work out the value of alpha taking assuming that acetic acid is a weak acid therefore 1 minus alpha is assumed to be equal to 1 therefore we have over here 1.18 power minus 5 is equal to 0 0.1 alpha square okay so this is how you are supposed to work out and simplify and get the value of degree of dissociation and finally this concentration of hydronium ion is obtained by multiplying this formula 0 0.1 into alpha 0 0.1 into this value 1.3 10 power minus 3 is coming to 1.34 in 10 power minus 3 moles per liter. So this is one simple numerical which should help you to solve similar problem like this. So I request you all to practice this sum example 7.14 also by taking the what do you call decomposition dissociation of a base okay the ionization of ammonia this year okay go through this working it is easily done example 7.15 also it is solved over here 7.15 will solved over here very nicely okay and then we come to the merits and limitations of bronsted lowry concept there were merits there were limitations that's why there is another concept over there okay after this we will go to study another concept under this heading now merits are the Bronsted and Lowry concept is a wider concept as compared to the RNS concept. It qualifies a large variety of substances as base, OH- or NH2 or amines or pyridine or pyrrole or ethoxide ion, acetate etc. The concept can be used to explain acid-base reactions. Acid-base reactions. Okay. Even in non-aqueous photonic solvents. Thus, acid this behavior according to this concept is not dependent upon any solvent. So according to this bronsted lowry concept, the acid basic behavior is not dependent upon what solvent we are using. This concept explains beautifully the phenomenon of salt hydrolysis. So when we add water to a salt, the salt undergoes hydrolysis. So this has been possible by the bronsted lowry theory. Okay. Then relative strength of acids and bases can be determined with the help of this concept now this salt hydrolysis you must have come across in icac in the chapter acid bases and salts in the chapter acid bases and salts towards the end of the chapter when uh, the boys some of the boys uh, are taught you uh, when an acid is or uh, a salt when a salt is dissolved in water for example let me give you one example over here for the salt hydrolysis if i take a salt like ammonium chloride and put this ammonium chloride in water okay this is going to produce ammonium hydroxide and hcl hydrochloric acid now this is called salt hydrolysis this ammonium hydroxide is a weak alkali it is a weak alkali and this hydrochloric acid is a strong acid it is a strong acid so by the method of salt hydrolysis we can come to know the salt contains whether it contains a weak acid or a weak alkali or a strong acid or a strong alkali let us do one more example over here for example if i take sodium chloride salt and put this sodium chloride salt in water it is going to produce sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid now look at this very carefully sodium hydroxide is a strong it is a strong alkali strong alkali hydrochloric acid is a strong acid so this is all about uh, what you call straw what you call hydrolysis of salts now this is a reaction in which salts react with water to form base and an acid a solution which is acidic alkaline or neutral in nature so that is all about salt hydrolysis over here okay now coming back to our textbook over here in the merits in the merits of the uh, bronsted lowry theory uh, the relative strength of acids and bases can be determined with the help of this concept so that is what i have already explained to you that time the relative strength in the previous page over here 
relative strength of acid or a base can be compared, they can be found out in terms of a ratio. This ratio root under Ka1 by Ka2 gives us the relative strength of the two acids. If there are two bases, it will be Kb1 divided by Kb2 under root. Okay. Now, after this, coming down to the limitations, the drawbacks of the bronsted lowry theory, this concept cannot satisfactorily explain the non-protonic acid-base reactions. So, if the reactions are acid-base reactions, we cannot explain the non-protonic acid-base reactions. This concept gives undue emphasis upon protonic exchange. There are several acid-base reactions in which protons are not involved at all. Okay, that's why, for example, if you look at sulfur dioxide and sulfur dioxide reacting reversely with each other, we are forming SO2 plus and SO3 2 minus sulfate ion. So, this is not possible to be explained by the bronsted lowry theory. Okay, then that's why, that's why today we have on page number 460 a new theory which is called Lewis concept or the electronic concept where G. N. Lewis proposed a more general and more fundamental concept of acid, concept of acid and base in terms of electrons. So this is perhaps the most widely used concept due to its simplicity and wider application. So according to this theory, according to Lewis, a base is the substance which can furnish an electron pair to form a covalent coordinate bond. So a base is a substance which can furnish an electron, not an electron, but an electron pair to form a coordinate covalent bond. While an acid is a substance which has a tendency to accept an electron pair from a base to form a covalent coordinate bond. So this is according to the Lewis concept, the electronic concept. So remember, base and electron pair donor, base and electron pair donor, acid and electron pair acceptor. So make this point very clear in your mind. So hence, a Lewis base possesses a lone pair of electrons and acts as an electron pair donor. That is called a Lewis base. Okay. Whereas the Lewis acid possesses either an incomplete octet or can expand it octet and thereby act as an electron pair acceptor. Species like hydroxyl or Cl- minus or Cn- minus water, ammonia, alcohol, amine possess lone pair of electrons and they behave as Lewis bases. So, when a species is having a lone pair of electrons, they are acting as Lewis bases. Okay. Otherwise, substances like sulfur trioxide, boron trichloride, aluminum chloride, boron trichloride, zinc chloride are example of Lewis acids because they can, they can accept an electron pair from whom? From a base. Okay. So, a typical example of a Lewis acid base reaction is given over here. Reaction between boron trifluoride, a Lewis acid, and a Lewis base over here to form a complex. A coordinate bond is formed over here. Okay, so over here ammonia is giving the providing the lone pair uh, to the boron trifluoride to form a coordinate bond. So this is an example of a typical <coughs> Lewis acid base reaction. So here in this reaction, the central the central boron atom in the acid. BF3 possesses what? An incomplete octet and take a lone pair of electrons. It can take a lone pair of electrons. Therefore, the two combine together to form a complex. So, Lewis definition is a wider definition and includes those reactions also in which no ions are formed. And, and over here, no transference of hydrogen ion or other ions takes place. So, here, base plus acid is giving complex. So, most of the times, according to this Lewis concept, Whenever a base and an acid is combining, most of the time a complex is being formed. Again, the Lewis definition thus covers all reactions involving H plus ion, oxide ion or solvent interactions as well as the formation of acid base adducts, complexes such as R3N, okay, tertiary amines, BF3 and all coordinate compounds. Now, the advantages. Let us see the advantages. Lewis concept is a very wide concept and has the following merits over other concepts. Acid-base reactions not involving protons are covered by this concept. According to this Lewis concept, acid-base behavior neither involves any particular species nor depends upon the presence or absence of a solvent. 
basic properties of metallic oxides and acidic properties of non-metal oxides can easily be explained by this concept. Why basic properties of metal oxides? Because metals, you know, metals, they can lose electrons. And non-metals, you know, they can accept, they can, uh, oxides can accept electrons. Non-metallic oxides I'm telling you, okay? Okay, now, this concept includes many gas phase and high temperature non-solvent reactions as neutralization processes. But, sad to say, there are limitations to this theory as well. So, this concept has no uniform scale of acid base strength. So, we cannot say how strong an acid is, how strong a base is. The strength of an acid and base in this concept is variable and depends on the reaction selected. The concept is so broad that the terms acid and base used in general chemistry lose their original meaning and create unnecessary complications. Okay, so that's why this concept is so broad. So, the terms used make a confusion over here. Therefore, let's move to the next heading over here, the ionization of water, the most important part of this chapter again, the ionic product of water. Look at that, ionic product of water. So from here, definitely you are going to get a lot of questions. We know water is a weak electrolyte and does not ionize much in a pure state. So it ionizes partially. Conductivity measurements indicate that in pure state, it contains a few hydronium ions and hydroxyl ions. This implies that in pure state, water undergoes self-ionization as shown over here. Water molecules, they undergo self-ionization. One is forming hydronium ion, another one is forming hydroxyl ion. So, this derivation is required. So, if you apply the law of mass action and the law of chemical equilibrium over here, the equilibrium constant for this reaction is given, expression is given over here. K is equal to concentration of hydronium ion into concentration of hydroxyl ion divided by concentration of water to the power of 2. Now, this is a constant. The concentration of water is a constant and this constant multiplied to K, this is also a constant. That is why over here, this constant K into concentration of water to the square becomes Kw which is called ionic product of water. This Kw is called ionic product of water and it is defined as the product of the concentration of hydronium ions and the concentration of hydroxyl ions. Okay, so its value has been calculated to be and found to be, remember this value. The value of Kw for ionic product of water is, learn this value, 1.008 into 10 power minus 14 mole square per liter square at 298 Kelvin. <coughs> Since pure water is neutral, the concentration of these two ions must be equal in it. Thus, in pure water at 298 Kelvin, remember, if you multiply these two, this is the value of the ionic product of water, so they are equal. Okay, so you have to make it a square root of this. So, we are getting a value for each of the concentration of hydronium and hydroxyl ion as 1.0 in 10 power of minus 7 moles per liter. So, the ionization of pure water increases with an increase in temperature. Please underline this. On page 461, the ionization of pure water increases with an increase in temperature. With a rise in temperature, uh, the ionization becomes higher. Therefore, the value of Kw also increases with an increase in temperature. However, the increase in temperature does not affect the relative concentration of hydronium and hydroxyl ions. So, at all temperatures, note that concentration of hydronium ion and concentration of hydroxyl ion is equal to root under Kw, okay. The values of concentration of hydronium and hydroxyl ions at different temperatures are given in the table over here, table 7.3, don't learn this table, in, required in the examinations, these values are always given, okay. So, so that is all about the ionic product of water over here, it has been explained properly, but over here, remember one more thing, the concentration of hydroxyl ion can be obtained by dividing Kw, that is 1.008 in 10 power of minus 14 by concentration of hydronium ion. Okay, so similarly, the concentration of hydronium ion can also be obtained by this formula. Okay, so remember this part, this part you remember, this one. In neutral solution, the concentration of hydronium ion is equal to concentration of hydroxyl ion. In acidic solution, the concentration of hydronium ion is greater than concentration of hydroxyl ion. In basic solution, the concentration of hydronium ion is less than the concentration of hydroxyl ion. So, based on all this, some examples, numericals are there. Very simple, direct application of formula numericals are there. 
I'll read out this and try to explain you this problem. A dilute solution of HCl contains concentration of hydrogen ion 5.14 for a minus 5 moles per liter at 290 Kelvin. What is the concentration of hydrogen ion? So we know this is the formula. Concentration of ionic product of water is 1.010 power of minus 14. So OH becomes, make it the subject of the formula, put the value of concentration of uh, hydronium ion given in the question, 5.10 power minus 5, simplify it, you get the answer. Okay. Similarly, practice example 7.17 also for the calculation of hydronium ions and hydroxyl ions over here. It is done, okay, it is there in your textbook also, page number 400 and uh, what is called 61, okay. When example 7.17 is there, hmm, it is solved. Then we come to pH value and pH scale. We have heard this word pH value. The potential of the hydrogen ion concentration and the pH scale. pH scale starts from 1 to pH 1 to pH 14. pH 7 is neutral. Now, here also there are some numericals to be practiced. We have already seen above that the acidic or basic nature of a solution can, may be expressed in terms of the concentration of hydronium ion present in it. In a neutral solution, we have seen this concentration of hydronium ion is equal to half of that, 1.010 per minus 7 moles per liter. In acidic solution, this concentration is higher than this, while in basic solution, this concentration of hydronium ion is less than this. Okay. Thus, a solution with hydronium ion equal to 6 into 10 to the power of minus 4 moles per liter is more acidic and less basic as compared to solution with this strength over here given. Okay. So, on this basis, we can define we can clearly define pH defined as the negative power to which 10 must be raised in order to express the hydronium ion concentration of solution in moles per liter. So there is an equation, there is an equation given underneath over here, pH value, okay, which was work uh, derived by Sorensen in 1909, okay. The pH value of a solution may be defined as a negative logarithm to the base 10 of hydronium ion concentration expressed in moles per liter. So pH, learn this relation. pH is negative logarithm to the base 10 of hydrogen ion concentration, hydronium ion concentration, and then remember that hydronium ion concentration is equal to 10 to the power of minus pH. Okay, this is from the concept of uh, this table over here. So have a look at this scale over here, pH scale, which is a beautiful scale written at the bottom over here pH 7, this is pH 7, 10 to the power minus 7 means pH 7, 10 to the power minus 6 means pH 6. So this is the concentration of hydronium ion over here, this way. And these are the pH values, corresponding pH values. Okay, so the pH depends upon the concentration of hydronium ion. Okay, keep a note of that. So that is all about the pH scale. Now, we will move further over here and try to talk about pOH scale also. So here, for convenience of calculations, another term pH, potential of hydroxyl ion has been defined also. Potential of hydroxyl ion is equal to negative logarithm to the base 10 of hydroxyl ion concentration. So based on this, since we know a relation between pH and pOH can be obtained as given below, concentration of hydronium ion into concentration of hydroxyl ion is Kw. So if you take logarithm on both sides, so this will give logarithm of ionic product because this is called ionic product. So we get over here a term pKw, negative logarithm. pKw is equal to negative logarithm to the base 10 kW. So pH plus pKOH is also called pKw. Okay. So remembering kW is 1.010 per minus 14. So pKw will be equal to minus logarithm to the base 10 kW. Okay, so that is how we get the value of pKw in terms and pKw is coming to 14 in this case. Remember, pH, if we add pH plus pOH, it will always come to 14. Okay, now, now here there are some numericals to be done. So I like calculate the pH of the following. So the strength of the hydrochloric acid is given 0 0.001 mHCl. So the strength of this HCl is given, which means what? Over here, they have given the strength means the concentration of hydrochloric acid is given. So applying this concept over here, concentration of hydronium ion is equal to concentration of hydrochloric acid that is equal to 0.001 m molar. That is equal to 1.010 power minus 3 moles per liter. So applying the formula pH is equal to negative logarithm based in concentration of hydronium ion. Putting the values over here, we get the value of pH of hydrochloric acid to be equal to negative of negative 3 log 10 
log 10 base 10 that is coming to 3 okay since log 10 value is 1 okay so similarly the ph of sodium hydroxide can also be worked out over here because we know concentration of hydroxyl ions is equal to it's given over here 0 0.01 m that is there so concentration of hydroxyl ion can be worked out by using this formula hydroxyl ion concentration it's given over here in the question so put the value over there and get the value of concentration of hydronium ion okay then work out the value of ph that will come to around 12 okay alternatively ph can also be obtained by subtracting 14 minus whatever we have got over here that is 12 that will give you 2 okay so similarly try to work out example 7.19 7.20 okay 7.20 degree of dissociation is given over here then 7.21 is there try to go through this here there is a uh, use of the molarity formula which i have done in the first chapter some basic concept of chemistry w is equal to mm dash v by 1000 okay so get the molarity and then apply this molarity over here 0 0.075 as the strength concentration of hydroxyl and then apply the formula and work out the value of ph okay so practice example 7.22 also okay, it is there property these are all important sums all questions will be coming from here only in your promotion examination if it comes okay so please practice this seriously example 7.23 also 7.24 okay then 7.25 okay till 7.25 you practice then i will continue with the common ion effect in my next class okay so it's already time up so just uh, hold on over there don't go away because i need to report your attendance then you may leave the class okay boys how many boys are present today 30 boys 32 30 32 okay never mind so with this i'll just record the attendance quickly then you may leave the class okay attendance is downloaded okay thank you so much have a nice day